Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode of Let's Play Bare Knuckle 3. I'm your host, Devilish. Let's get right back to it. It is 6 a.m. on November 8th, 2015. If my voice sounds a little bit tight, I woke up feeling a little bit under the weather, but I'm going to try to get this out. I've attempted this enough times already. Man, I never realized that this would be so much work. I know it's hard, but I guess I'm my own worst critic. I want to make sure everything works out fine. Grab the, grab the apple so that the enemy doesn't steal it. Because that would just create more trouble for me, honestly. So how's everybody doing? It's Sunday. I've actually got the whole weekend off. Which is a rarity because I have two jobs. I work at the Paris Island Marine Corps Exchange. I'm up for promotion soon. And I work at Beaufort Memorial Hospital as an aide to a physical therapist. It's odd fun. A lot has changed in the past year. I guess I figure now that I finally got my own place, I don't have to be interrupted by roommates or anything like that. Now's as good a time as any to give this whole Let's Play thing a shot. Now, there's nothing new here, except for the enemies that drop from the ceiling. How weird. I mean, where would they be dropping from? There aren't rafters up here. No. I'm not having that. These guys are really annoying, because not only do they move fast, but if they hit you at just the right angle, you hit not down. And they can destroy destructive yeah. Destroy destructible objects. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> they can break things with nothing but the tip of a knife. Not to mention holding a weapon somehow increases their speed. Apparently these guys are the mini-boss of this area. I guess like how Electra was the mini-boss of the bar area in the first game, right before the end of the first level, the fight with the bartender. Any of you guys ever been to a rave before? It's <laughs> Going to an EDM club is kind of like this. The people look like nothing but shadows, and you can see the lights flashing about. Maybe I should throw out a warning or something, I don't know. So apparently we came into the back door because we go through the club and directly into the bar and we face off against Mona and Lisa, aka Onehime and Yasha. These guys are pretty easy if you know what to do. If they start moving forward in tandem like you just saw there, or if they home in on you, use your special attack to avoid their attacks and damage them at the same time. Try not to go toe to toe with them if you can help it. Just wait for them to attack you and then counter. Like so. <clears throat> but do whatever you can to keep them apart from one another, because then, when they start moving closer to each other, you'll be able to predict their movements and respond accordingly. I stand close to the middle so that I can hit both of them at one time. Usually, Onihime is the survivor, and she starts behaving much more erratically after Yasha gets to spend. Whoop! Jumped it! Oh! Yes! Perfect! I love it. A blue island bar. Check out the shark... The shark tank behind the bar there with the sharks swimming in it. That's really cool. What'd they do? Throw a rock through the skylight or something? Must have been a heck of an arm. Dear friends. Apparently they're luring us into a trap at the construction site. Oh, man. And conveniently, there's a newscast regarding the case that we just happen to be working. We obtained information. Police officer Axel Stone is part of the criminal organization responsible for the kidnapping. What? Yeah, that sounds totally ridiculous. Apparently, it's a frame job. The National Police Agency. What is that? Like, internal affairs? The apprehension of Axel Stone. And Zan's so sensitive. There's no time for this now. Come on, man. He's being framed for a crime he didn't even commit. A serious crime. Man. Now I know how Ryan Lanza felt. Ugh. Trying not to be too depressing here. So we go straight for the construction site. This part is cool, because when the drums fall, you can attack them and send them flying towards an enemy. 
wind apparently carries them forward, even though they get struck with momentum from another direction, from the opposite direction. I need to get too close to these guys. Oh, I knew it. I try to pin them down. They always do. I've been keeping an eye on the election. Oh, how about that? Not with that. Anyway, I've been keeping an eye on the elections pending soon. Seems like we're heading for something we haven't seen before. I want to say he does a incredible challenge to the establishment. I think that's really awesome. Especially considering the way things have been going for the past few years. Don't get me started on that, I've got a lot to see about it. Now, if you see the pits down here, if you fall, you'll take heavy damage. But if you knock an enemy into it, they're dispatched immediately. So, you can plan your movements accordingly. And another thing you can do with these guys is they... Oh my god, that's close. They lay down for longer than the other enemies, so you can just walk up next to them. So as soon as they stand up, your character will automatically grab them, and then you can throw them however you wish. I wanted to dispatch her. Normally get more points off of her, but it's okay. Axes fit really well for this section because if his kick is long enough to hit a wall when it's off screen. If the bulldozer gets too close to it, you can attack it with anything from a special attack, a jump kick, or even just a regular punch to ward it off. I prefer to use the dragon wing attack because it has a wide area. You can hit both a wall and the bulldozer from the front or the back. Have to make sure your timing is right so that your energy bar is all the way up. This is another cool thing. Ah, I tried to do the back fist. I screwed up. Oh, run it. And I'm gonna get pinned between the walls and the bulldozer. Ah! Just have to keep moving forward. Otherwise, you'll get stuck before you know. And when you break the last wall, make sure you're standing on the bottom of the screen, so that otherwise you'll get pinned between the girder and the bulldozer. And the driver gets the skull split open with a drum. Nice. And we move to the obligatory elevator seat. All beat-em-up games have elevators of some sort. They always go up, they never go down, except in the Simpsons arcade game. What the f- <laughs> just jumped off the edge. <laughs> That was one of the first arcade games I ever played when I was, I think I was about seven years old when that game came out. I remember I've been a gamer since about the age of three. My cousins had an NES. And so I've been told, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but they remember it. They say that when I first started I had no clue what was going on, but I had fun with it. And then a couple of years later, on my fifth birthday, I got an NES of my own. And the rest, as they say, is history. But don't get me wrong. I've played all kinds of different game systems. I exercise regularly. I run every day. I lift weights. I've studied martial arts. I wish I could find a Shotokan dojo around here. I really do, because I had so much fun with it in college. But then I had to move back home. So we've reached the top, and apparently this is why Axe is being framed for the disappearance of the gen. Some kind of devil, codename Brick. Identical except for the fact that the trims on his shoes and his gloves are blue instead of red. The more damage you do to him, the faster and stronger he becomes. When he blocks, he'll start rushing toward you and unload on you a flurry of attack. So try to Gauge your movements, be very careful, and you can also use this handspring flip attack that you can actually use in two-player mode. One character grabs the other, jumps, and then attacks, and you can heavily damage an opponent in mid-air, but it can't be done in one-player mode. Oh, he's bright red. He's Man, he looks like he did in the Western version of the game, back when he had a yellow shirt. Oh, what a finish! And the robot is overload, goes critical, and explodes. All you can see is a 
strong patch of denim on the knee there. I wonder what that skeleton's made of. Living tissue of a metal endoskeleton. <laughs> that thing does kind of look like a Terminator, doesn't it? Maybe that's where they got the idea. Created to blend in with humans. And Skate doesn't trust Zan. He believes he's still in with the enemy. Look at his nose. <laughs> He's trying to be so angry and tough, and he's only 12 years old. Zen's depressed, is that so? Mm. Blaze is quick to rush to his defense. I suppose she was the one who first got in contact with him. Well, there's no proof of that. He might be a mole. And Axel's quick to play the part of the leader. The camera zooms in on a hidden trap door. Seems they're looking for a fight. All right. Let's give him one. Start around round four, the secret underground tunnel. This stage is a little bit more complicated because you want to watch the vibrations of the railings on the ground. That's your clue as to which track one of the cars will come rushing down. And if you're smart and quick on your feet, you can lure your opponents into the rail cars and damage them. But make sure you don't get grabbed by any of these guys, because they will even to the point of grabbing you and tanking one of the rail cars just to damage you. And there are so many of them that if they pull the trick off often enough, you'll be close to death before you know it. And for some reason, they evade very quickly, but in other cases, they just stand there. Like so. <laughs> now. In case anyone's curious, I know that my recording setup is amateurish at best. I figure I want to wait and see what kind of response I get for this before I invest in anything more professional. Although I would like to get a capture card one of these days just to widen the number of games that I can potentially play. I like all kinds of different games and systems. Oh, okay, it's coming from above, that's good. And also, if you run forward while the rail car is flying down, it'll... The rail car will crash into any enemies that happen to be standing there, and the enemies won't even have time to process that you're there. So, nine times out of ten, there's no avoiding it for them. These guys do grab moves too, so try to stand with you, even when you don't see any enemies nearby, because... The rail cars can rush in from out of nowhere, and the damage is very heavily. Oh! Oh, oh, man. Oh, that was perfect. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my- Oh, I pulled the attack off at just the right time. I am on a streak right now, guys. I love it. But I think that's going to do it for episode 2 of Let's Play Bare Knuckle 3. Comments and criticisms are always welcome, guys. I'm always looking to improve. I'm really excited to see what happens. This has been your host, Devilish, reminding you, keep it awesome.